On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. This is part two of our story concerning how the social justice movement is bringing real persecution to Christians in America. The information I shared on Juan Riesco and Nini's Deli in part one was from an interview by John Harris on his channel, Conversations That Matter. The good news is that John and his supporters are going to underwrite a low budget, under $10,000 video documentary about Nini's. And I'll tell you where you can contribute to this documentary on the transcript notes to this video on my blog. John says, quote, there are still areas of the country that think the COVID lockdowns are all about health issues and that BLM demonstrations and violence and looting and protests are all about race. This documentary blows those assumptions out of the water, unquote. Brethren, Chicago is a very dark spiritual atmosphere. I used to live there. And, and the brothers and sisters in the few churches standing for the truth of the word of God and proclaiming the good news of Christ there are testimonies to the power of the grace of God to strengthen Christians to abound against all the evil spiritual forces, even as an island surrounded by hostile armies. These are ordinary sinners, just like you and I, saved by the grace of Christ alone, who were scared when angry protesters would spy on them and follow them home and threaten to harm their children. But they were granted grace to accept the reality of the possibility of all things that they held dear to be suddenly ripped away from them for the great privilege of standing firm for the word of truth and the good news of Christ. At first they thought that they could placate the BLM social warriors by saying they believed Black Lives Matter but had reservations about the BLM organization. This only emboldened the BLM comrades to shame them and press them harder for more commitments. What about transgender? Do transgender lives matter? They are relentless and unappeasable because the foundation of their worldview is based in the cultural Marxism of critical theory. By the way, please, please listen to our entire series on critical theory and critical race theory and social justice that is in the midst of being recorded right now. Maybe eight, ten videos. You can't really understand what's going on in our culture unless you comprehend this worldview. Please send this, this video to all your friends and everyone you care about as well. We need to learn how to live as Christians under the post-Christian, anti-Christian culture of the fascist, totalitarian, world government of the Great Reset, which has already begun its baby steps under the Biden regime. Biden's campaign slogan was Build Back Better, which is the slogan of the World Economic Forum led by Klaus Schwab. The telos of the WEF is, quote, you will own nothing and you will be happy, unquote. For the World Economic Forum and the global oligarchs desire to own everything, including you and your thought life and what you worship. The Great Reset, as in all totalitarian regimes, cannot allow a true Christianity that will not bow to Caesar or government as Lord over all because Christ Jesus is Lord over all. God has delegated authority to government for the blessing of mankind. But when government takes the place of God in forcing people to say and do things that he says are abominations, then, quote, we must obey God rather than men, Acts 5.29. Therefore, dear friends and brethren, we're in a war, which is not a war against flesh and blood. This is not a Democrat or Republican thing where you can point fingers and hate one another. This is not that kind of a war. Second Corinthians 10, 3 to 6, Ephesians 6, 12 and 13 tells us about it. The devil wants us to hate 
and condemn and despise and divide from one another and point fingers. But Jesus came to deliver us from our sins and from ourselves and from our self-righteousness and from our pointing of fingers so that we might glorify Christ with one voice and one heart as brethren in Christ. But we have to be in Christ for first and the enemy of our souls has erected strongholds and fortresses in the minds just like it says in the scriptures in the minds of those who do not believe the gospel which are as scripture says these fortresses are speculations lofty imaginations and false teachings meant to substitute for the good news of Christ. These damnable religious lies and worldviews, such as critical theory, critical race theory, and social justice, are some of the tools that Satan uses to, quote, blind the minds of the unbelieving so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. But many of us who are true regenerated Christians are equipped by his spirit and the word of God with divine power to expose and tear down and destroy those spiritual fortresses of darkness and quote, take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Second Corinthians 10, five. Brothers and sisters, we have been called by God to stand against every lie that exalts sinful mankind and human ideas of justice. And instead, because all authority, all authority is now his in heaven and earth, we are to preach the gospel of Christ to everyone and teach all to obey and follow after him, not after men, after him. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Luke 24 to 47, Romans 1, 18 to 25. But know this, brethren, when we do that, when we preach the gospel and make disciples or followers of Christ, when we do that, we shall suffer persecution. That is the promise of Christ. All who will live godly lives in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3.12 Do not deceive yourself in presuming that you will do the great and noble final sacrifice of your life for Christ if you're not willing to suffer in insignificant or minor ways today. If you're not willing to lay your life down for your wife today. Forget about that great noble deed. If we take a stand for the truth of the gospel, we will suffer. To follow Christ, we must be willing to forsake everything, including our very lives. Luke 14, 25 to 33. But that is well worth it in order to honor Christ, the glorious awesome Christ and lift up his glorious person and his work of salvation. Allow me to give you a hint of what kind of tribulation we Christians in the U.S. may be facing. Most Americans are not aware that Chinese Communist Party officials who typically despise blacks are primarily the ones responsible for the founding of the U.S. Black Lives Matter organization I believe it was in, in San Francisco, California. The Chinese Progressive Association in the U.S. is a front organization for the Communist Party of China. Maoist leaders of the CPA on the ground in many U.S. states back, support, goad, incite the strife, rebellion, the riots, the racial division, burning of cities through BLM operatives. Saints, please please, uh, as an aside, please see our series on critical theory number three for, for citations about that. All such BLM hatred and agitation comes as a result of the cultural Marxist 
critical theory worldview promoted by the Chinese Communist Party. Ideas have consequences. Critical theory has severe antichrist consequences. In a June 7, 2020 article in American Thinker, Andrea Widberg wrote an article entitled, Mao's Cultural Revolution Has Landed in America. She notes that in revolutions, the second generation is always purer than the first and will brutally purge heretics. It happened in Mao's Cultural Revolution, which saw students violently destroy anyone who deviated from Maoist doctrine. Quote, we're witnessing that now across corporate America, especially in the media, as college grads destroy the woke leftists who hired them, unquote. The poison propaganda of critical theory cultivated on college campuses as a substitute for truth is today being thrown by students back into the faces of the professors who taught them. Some are falling prey to cancel culture and losing their jobs. Some are being threatened with physical harm like Juan. It is further spreading into American corporate culture. That's exactly what happened in China's cultural revolution, except there it escalated far beyond what we see today. Some of these horrors were related by James Banker's article about how schools were turned into places of propaganda rather than knowledge and how the indoctrinated students brutally turned on their teachers, their families, and their friends. Quote, Mao's child revolutionaries could, with youthful exuberance and clarity of purpose, chain a teacher to a radiator and bludgeon him to death with an iron bar, or force a teacher to eat nails and feces, among other tortures. Eating human flesh became a macabre proof of loyalty. The party's own investigations tell of students in Wangzi province cooking and eating their teachers and principals. In some government cafeterias, the bodies of executed traitors were displayed on meat hooks while their flesh was served and consumed." Unquote. China's Cultural Revolution began in 1966. When it ended a decade later, tens of millions of people had been brutally persecuted. Hundreds of thousands, perhaps even as many as 20 million people, had been slaughtered in massacres across China. Then, as now, the revolution was incubated in the country's colleges. Again, brethren, ideas have consequences. Demonically inspired ideas have diabolical consequences. Christian brethren, we must be ready to overcome evil with good. We can't sit on the fence here. We need to fight these doctrines of demons with the divinely powerful weapons that God has granted us. Learn about critical theory. Study the video series we've started on critical theory. Note how it's diametrically opposed to the good news of Christ. Make certain that you understand the biblical gospel and that you are born of God. Test yourself as Paul demanded of the Corinthian believers to see if you're truly in the faith and that Christ really dwells in you, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Do you love the Lord Jesus more than anything in the world? Is he the pearl of great price to you? Matthew 13, 46. Seek the Lord. Make certain that your roots go down deep into the scriptural Christ so that you will not fall away when affliction or persecution arises because of God's word as Christ himself warns us in Matthew 13, 21. Share this video and the gospel with everyone you know, especially those who profess to be Christians. We are to preach 
the gospel to Christians. Romans 1, 15 to 16, 2 Corinthians 5, 20 and 21. Stand in the truth, brethren. Be willing and ready to give up everything, including your life, if necessary, for Christ and the truth of his gospel. Love the Lord Jesus and his people. Love the narrow Jesus. Love the narrow way. Love the truth. Thank you for watching. Please like and comment below. Subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when new content is posted. All other ground is thinking sand.